Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Ariana Lopez, and today we are continuing our video series on how to use a proxy server to connect to a public endpoint. And in this video, we are going to create our proxy server. But before we can start to build, we actually need to set up one of our AWS services that we will be using. And in this case, we will be setting up our systems manager. So I'm on my console homepage. Systems manager is the top for me. But if it's not for you, go to the search and type in systems manager, and it will pop up as the first one. So go ahead and click that. Now, one thing to note is you want to make sure you're in the correct region. We are in Ohio, US East 2. So we want to stay in there because that's where we're building everything. Uh, the other thing we want to do is do a quick setup. So to the left, under Systems Manager, you'll see Quick Setup. Click that. Now for Quick Setup, what we want to do is we want to select Host Management. You can see there's a bunch of different options here. But the reason we're using SSM or Systems Manager is because it will allow us to connect to our devices directly. And so earlier in a few of the videos, I stated that we weren't using a jump host or a bastion server um, because we wanted to reduce our threat model. And so by using AWS Systems Manager, it will allow us to directly connect to our devices using the console. And when we actually go to build out, when we connect to the devices, you'll see us using Systems Manager and what it's capable of. So in this case, for the setup, we're going to select host management, and we're going to hit create. And for systems manager, what we want is we want to update our systems manager agent every two weeks, collect information about our instance, and then we'll go ahead and install and configure CloudWatch agent. And I think that is all we want. Current regions, fine, all instances, and then we'll go ahead and click create. All right, so now we're going to have to wait for it to set up. All right, so now, as you can see up at the top of the screen, we, it says your host management quick set configuration was successfully updated. So we can go ahead and exit out of here. Now we are going to create an IAM role. So I am on the IAM page now. And so what we're going to do is click on roles. Here, I'm going to create a new role. AWS service use case will be EC2. And we're going to go and find SSM Manage Instance Core, which is now selected. Select Next. Name it Proxy SSM Role. And that looks good. So we're going to create the role. Now we will go ahead and create the EC2 instance. So we are going to go to launch instance. And we're going to name the instance proxy video. And we are going to use Ubuntu. Instance type, I'm going to use a T3 medium. For key pair, we're going to select without a key pair. Network, change this to Greengrass. Now our subnet here, we do not want it to be in the private subnet. This needs to be in the public subnet because it needs to have access to the internet. And one big thing here you have to enable is the auto assigned public IP address. If you do not do this, you will run into an issue when you spin up your server and are trying to download packages. So make sure this is uh, enabled. We're going to click that here. And then for firewalls or security groups, we are going to select existing security group, and we are going to select the proxy server security group. And then we're going to scroll down to advanced details. And now we're going to select our role, and that is going to be our proxy server we just created. Now we'll go over to the right, look at the summary. We have one instance, software image, is Ubuntu. T3 medium, proxy server. All right, I think we are good to go. Going to make sure of the right subnet. Yep, public. All right, so now we're going to click launch instance. And we are going to give that a minute. 
our server is ready so we're going to select the proxy video and then up at the top click connect again session manager we're going to use to hop onto the instance so now we're on the server the first thing we need to do i'm going to go in as root and then we need to install tiny proxy So it is installed now. To verify, we'll go to cd slash etsy, oops, tiny proxy, do an ls, and you can see we have the tiny proxy configuration file there. Now we have to go into the tiny proxy configuration and actually modify a few things. So we know we're gonna use port 888, and that was also in our security group. We have to scroll through here and change a couple things. So here there is an allow area. So what we need to do is allow all of the CIDR block within our VPC to access this proxy server. So what we're going to do is type in allow and then the CIDR range for our VPC. All right, so the next thing we have to do is modify this filter section. And we're just going to uncomment this one line. And what this will allow us to do is we're going to, we're going to create a new file within the tiny proxy directory, and it's going to be named filter. And what we will specify in that file is what we want to have access to if we are coming through the proxy. And in this case, it's going to be the AWS IoT credential endpoint and also a URL to GitHub, which I will explain a little more about later. So the filter has now been set. The other thing we want to modify is the filter default deny. And we are going to uncomment that out. So that means it's going by default to de deny all traffic unless it is specified by the filter file, which is exactly what we want. All right, and that is all we want to do. So we're going to exit out of here and save it. Now we need to create the filter file. So here I've pasted what needs to be in the filter file. In the first one, you'll see we have a GitHub URL, and this is going to be used for testing purposes when we do our validation, which will be the last video we do in the series. Um, and then here we have are allowing access to the credential endpoint. In the Greengrass documentation, you would have instructions on how to get this value. And so by reading the documentation and just running one of the, let me bring it over, one of the commands, this one here, uh, that is how you get that URL. And then lastly, we also need to put in a filter for stsamazonaws.com. This is a non-region specific STS endpoint that is going to be used in testing with our GitHub in the validation video. So in order for all of that to work, we need these three uh, URLs in our proxy server. So with that, we'll get out of here. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is restart the proxy server. So the changes we made will take effect. We have to run this command. Okay, so we have started Tiny Proxy and we've also enabled it. And so now we're gonna check the, the status of it. And you can see we are running. And so the next thing we wanna do is check out the log file. To fix the issue that we saw in the status of Tiny Proxy, what we have to do is go to the var log tiny proxy directory and then we're going to do an ls so in order for me to fix it i had to create a tiny proxy dot log so what i'll do is i'll mimic the same steps so you can follow along so we'll do touch 
tiny proxy and you're going to do a dot log but what i'm going to do is just do test dot log so i don't mess up my setup and then if we do an ls you'll see I have the tiny proxy underscore test dot log the next thing we have to do is we have to change the permissions on it and so what we do is just change mod 777 tiny proxy underscore test dot log and again for you it'll be change mod 777 tiny proxy dot log and then as soon as you do that after that you would want to restart the tiny proxy so system ctl restart tiny proxy oops and then you should be good to go so the next thing we're going to do is create our greengrass instance and so that will be done in our next video thanks for joining